Amrita Bindu Upanishad, Wikipedia article audio The Amrita Bindu Upanishad is one of the minor Upanishads of Hinduism. It is one of the five Bindu Upanishads, attached to the Atharvaveda, and one of twenty Yoga Upanishads in the four Vedas. The text is notable for condemning bookish learning and emphasizing practice, as well as for presenting a six-limbed yoga system which match five stages of the eight-stage Patanjali's Yoga Sutras and offering a unique, different sixth stage. Nomenclature Chronology and Anthology The Amitabindu is listed at number 20 in the serial order of the Muttaka enumerated by Rama to Hanuman in the modern era anthology of 108 Upanishads. The text sometimes appears under the title Brahmabindu Upanishad or Amritanada Upanishad, in some anthologies. It shares over 20 Vedanta philosophy-related verses with Amritanada Upanishad in compilations where these two texts are separated into independent Upanishads. Paul Dusan states that the title has two meanings first being the esoteric doctrine of a bindu or nada of the word om which signifies brahman, while the second meaning is a drop which grants immortality. The discussion of om by the text, states Dusan, suggests that the former meaning may be more appropriate. It is one of five Upanishads whose title has the suffix bindu meaning drop while Amrita represents nectar of immortality like ambrosia in Greek literature parlance, but here its real emphasis is on mind. Amrita Bindu Upanishad, also meaning immortal point, differentiates between vocal recitation of the OM syllable and its non-vocal practice. The different names of similar texts may be the result of a scribal error that persisted as the text spread across India. However, the number of verses vary between the manuscripts, ranging from 22 verses in Iyengar translation, and 38 in Dusan translation. The text, states Dusan, has also been referred to as Amritanada Upanishad by medieval Indian scholars such as Sayana of the Vijayanagara Empire. David Gordon White states that Bindu and Nada Upanishads were related deriving their nomenclature from the symbol OM and its relation to meditation on the Brahman metaphysical reality, the Nada texts all show some similarities to the Bindu texts, and may have origins in the Tantric traditions. The text of Amrita Bindu Upanishad, states White, appears under the title of Brahma Bindu Upanishad in some older anthology. Mircea Ilyad suggests that Amrita Bindu Upanishad was possibly composed in the same period as the didactic parts of the Mahabharata, the chief Sannyasa Upanishads and along with other early Yoga Upanishads, Brahma Bindu, Kesharika, Teju Bindu, Brahma Vidya, Nada Bindu, Yogashika, Tahayana Bindu, and Yogatattva Upanishad. Ilyad's suggestion places these in the final centuries of BCE or early centuries of the CE. All these, adds Ilyad, were likely composed earlier than the 10 or 11 later Yoga Upanishads such as the Yoga Kundali, Varaha, and Pashapatabrahma Upanishads. Structure Paul Dusan states that this text may have preceded Patanjali's Yoga Sutras text because it lists six instead of eight limbs for yoga, and both Maitri Upanishad in section 6.18 and Amrita Bindu placed Harana after Dhyana, a sequence that is reverse of what is found in the Yoga Sutras and all later yoga texts of Hinduism. Both Maitri and Amrita Bindu, adds Dusan, include the concept of Tarka in their verses, which may be important to their relative dating. Gavin Flood dates the Amrita Bindu text, along with other Yoga Upanishads, to be probably from the 100 BCE to 300 CE period. Contents
This Upanishad is among those which have been differently attached to two Vedas, depending on the region where the manuscript was found. Dusan states it and all Bindu Upanishads are attached to the Atharvaveda, while Iyengar states it attached to the Krishna Yajurveda. In Colebrook's version of 52 Upanishads popular in North India, the text is listed at number 19 along with the other four Bindu Upanishads with similar theme. The Narayana anthology also includes this Upanishad at number 11 in Bibliotheca Indica. In the collection of Upanishads under the title Upanekat, put together by Sultan Muhammad Dara Shikha in 1656, consisting of a Persian translation of 50 Upanishads and who prefaced it as the best book on religion, it is listed at number 26 and is named Ambart Bandai. The text opens with an introduction consisting of four verses, followed by four sections of which three discuss the practice, rules and rewards of yoga, followed by a discourse on life force. The text ends with a one-verse summary. Introduction Like almost all other yoga Upanishads, the text is composed in verse form. The Practice of Yoga the Amrita Bindu Upanishad is part of a group of five Bindu Upanishads, all dedicated to yoga. All five of Bindu Upanishads emphasize the practice of yoga and dhyana with OM, to apprehend Atman. The Rules of Yoga It is indeed the mind that is the cause of men's bondage and liberation, the mind that is attached to sense objects leads to bondage while dissociated from sense objects it tends to lead to liberation, so they think. The text opens stating that it is the wise, who after reading the text books repeatedly, throw away the books and proceed to the practice of yoga with meditation on the silent, invisible OM, in their pursuit of the Brahman knowledge. This lack of interest and esteem in learning or study of the Vedas is found in other Bindu Upanishads, states Dusan, and may reflect ancient trend among yogins. In the initial verses the Upanishad differentiates the mind under pure and impure states, and assigns its character as bondage and liberation. Further inquiry into the crux of the matter reveals that truth is realized within Vasudev, which is one's self. The Rewards of Yoga The Amrita Bindu Upanishad states that there are six limbs of yoga, whose sequence and one limb is different from Patanjali's Yoga Sutras. The verse 10 of the Upanishad recommends internally reciting Gayatri, Vyartas and Pranava mantras as counters to time the length of the breathing exercises while the section reminds the yogi to drink water and breath deeply to cleanse the body and senses. Against fear, against anger, against sloth, against too much waking, against too much sleeping, against too much eating, against starvation, a yogin shall always be on his guard. The verse 17 of the text begins the rules and recommendation for yoga practice. It begins by stating that one must pick a proper place for yoga, which translates dusan, is a level surface of ground, pleasant and free from faults. Place a mat, settle in, and enter an asana, states the Upanishad, such as Padmasana, Svastikasana, or even Bhadrasana. The yogi should face north, perform breathing exercises, alternating with the two nostrils, then in the state of comfort and being pacific, say OM, and begin meditating. Close and cast your eyes within, asserts the text in verse 22, sit motionless, practice yoga. Reach rhythmic breathing, concentrate, chain in the mind, reflect and reason, and proceed towards the union in the soul. It is unclear, states Dusan, 
whether the text implies union of individual soul with highest soul, or prana and apana, or is a choice left to the yogi. Theory of Prana The yogi should be silent, still, lost from the outer world, reflecting or remembering the sacred syllable internally. In verse 27, the Upanishad lists the yamas and niyamas. Conclusion Three months of dedicated yoga practice, asserts verse 28 of the text, begins to bring rewards to body. In four months the yogi sees the devas within, strength marks the yogi in five months, and after six months from starting yoga there is an absoluteness of will and sense of blissful aloneness, independence in the yogi states verse 29. The verses 30-31 describe how meditation and concentration on different moras of the OM syllable, the yogi thinks through soul and in soul alone. In some versions of the manuscript found in India, this section is much larger or called as Amrita Bindu Upanishad while the yoga part is titled separately as Amritanada Upanishad. Many medieval Indian scholars considered these as one. Iyengar has translated this as a separate Upanishad. The two Upanishads when separate, states White, share over 20 similar verses. This section, adds White, represent exclusively classical Vedanta philosophy methods and goals. To quote Swami Madhavananda the Amrita Bindu Upanishad inculcates, first, the control of the mind in the shape of desirelessness for sense objects, as the most effective way to the attainment of liberation and the realization of the one who is knowledge and bliss absolute. Then, it discusses the real nature of the soul and the realization of the highest truth which leads to unity. Thus, the central theme of all the Upanishads viz, that the Jiva and Brahman are eternally one, and that all duality is a mere superimposition due to ignorance is described in this text. Cows are of various colors, milk is one colored, the wise man looks upon soul as milk, of bodies as cows of different garbs, knowledge is hidden, as butter in milk. Bibliography In the above verse, Amrita Bindu Upanishad states that the mind is the cause of bondage and liberation. A mind that craves for something else is in bondage, one that doesn't is liberated. Spirituality is geared to obtain inner purity, calmness of the mind, and ultimately, liberation. In the state of liberation the mental components like virtue and vice become irrelevant. This section of Amrita Bindu text presents the Vedanta theory of non-dualism. It states that there is only one self in all creatures, that one appears many just as the moon appears many when reflected in many droplets, and the toughest connection yet most liberating connection one can make is with one's own self, which is difficult because it is concealed by Maya. When one successfully removes this veil, look within, one realizes the self and its unity with the eternal, indestructible, unchanging truth that is one with the universe. The text concludes with a single verse, asserting that one who has realized this knowledge is never reborn again, no matter where he dies. <laughs>